Hello everyone and welcome. This is a video specifically for the new timecounts.app of how to create new shows. Um, this is going to go over everything that you need to know for creating shifts for volunteers to sign up for. This is a short little video. Uh, if you're a volunteer, you do not need this information. This is mostly for people who will be working on the back end of the Time Counts app while they are working at the music hall. If that describes you, stay right here. If not, if you're looking for how to use Time Counts for volunteers, that will be linked in the description below. You can click that link and it will tell you everything you need to know about volunteering from the timecounts.app website. So on Time Counts, this is the Schedule tab. This is the only tab that you'll really need to create shifts within Time Counts. So if you're creating an event, um, such as an orientation or an appreciation event, that's going to go right here. So you'll click Create New Event. You can create a single or repeating event. I'm going to create a repeating event just to show you all of the features that you can do here. And I will call this event Test Event 1. So from here, you can do the location, or if this is an online event, you can switch it to an online format. We'll say that this is happening at the Historic Theater, just so we can see it. Um, the date down here, we're going to say that this is happening today, May 15th, um, and that the start time is going to be from 1 p.m. to, let's call it 2 p.m. So go right there. So it's a one hour orientation and I'm going to invite 15 spots to be open, but turn on a wait list in case anyone drops out. Once they've signed up, it will let the next person in. Then we'll click next, which will let us select our dates. So for a repeating event, you can change it to daily, weekly, monthly, and every some odd days. You can also, if you choose to do this, you don't have to necessarily do it every single week. You could do it every other week or something like that, you could choose to do it on Mondays or on Fridays or both. And you can do that until, so it's going to start as of tomorrow. I'm going to say let's do that until the 13th of June. So every week from now until the 13th of June, there should be an event for both Monday and Friday for this test event. So we'll create event. All right. Then it will bring you to a page like this. So let's say I'm going to use this picture of the hall. Crop and save. And exit out. So this is my picture now, and then I can write any description I want. I can say blah, 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 blah. You can also add new sections such as requirements, qualifications, skills, things that you can tell them it's nice if they can do it, or they must be able to do it, or suitable for, for example, if it was a computer task that you're having them do. Suitable for people who have strong technological skills, or suitable for, if it's a, a task that's really physical, suitable for people with athletic prowess, that type of thing. So you can make a new section there and write in anything that you want. And then from here, you can also go to the details. So you can say, I want to change the location here or switch it to online. You can change that number of spots. You can set the visibility of it so it's private to only your directory if you don't want people outside of your organization to show up. Um, you can review and confirm applicants or confirm people automatically so they don't have to wait for your confirmation to know that they've been signed up. You can change the sign up form if you want to add one so they have to complete the um, first time registration form, they have to complete a general sign up that asks um, what their availability is, or they have to complete the emergency medical form before they can sign up. You can also add a thank you message, change what time zone you're in, which you won't really need to use, um, and then add a confirmation email. Even if you don't put anything in these boxes for a confirmation or reminder email, time counts will still send them something to say you signed up for this shift at this day at this location. This is just if you want something specific, like thank you for signing up with the music hall, or thank you for signing up for the orientation, we would love your feedback, that type of thing. Um, but you don't need to fill anything out here, it will still notify them. Save those changes here. And then I'm going to publish this change. So the event is now published to the actual website. So if I go into the hub editor and then go to view, I can see the actual time counts website. We're still in the updating process, so there is a few bugs here. So normally there's a photo here and then it will say, um, welcome to the music hall, that type of thing. But if you go to find opportunities and then click to events, you'll see test event one has shown up here. 
So test event one, if you click into that, will bring you to here and you can see all of those dates come up right on the sidebar over here as well as all of the information that a volunteer would need to know about the event such as when it is so they select their orientation over here or whatever event over here and the location as well as any description or anything else that you wanted to add there so just for the sake of testing this I'm going to sign up for Friday May 26th click sign up and then they'll see this message that says thank you for signing up um, right now it says thank you for filling out the onboarding form, which this does not go to, but that's okay. So then we'll go to the hub, and we'll come back here. So from that schedule tab, if you wanted to cancel this event, um, you can click right over here, and then you can either unpublish it. If you just want to tweak some details and just make sure that nobody is signing up while you're doing that, you can unpublish it, uh, and that will save all of the information, or you can just delete it. So it's going to ask you to select all if it's a repeating event and say that you want to delete all of these. But if you were, for example, just trying to delete that Friday, May 26th, you could just select that one and it will just take that one out. And you can see that now there's 120 available slots across all of those. But we want to delete all of them. So we're going to select all and delete. If you want to create a shift, which is how we do all of our regular volunteer signups, you're going to click right over here and then you can create shifts. So let's say I wanted to create a shift for today for a greeter, do that right here. Um, if I want to change that from greeter to something else, I can just go into this drop down and select what other position I would like to make a slot for. Then you'll click add optional reference. You must do this for every event, no matter what it is or where it is. Um, the reason being this is the only way to tell volunteers which show they are signing up for. So for example, if my reference today is um, test event at the historic theater. And that is today, May 15th. I'm gonna say the start time is 11.30 a.m. and it ends at noon and there is two spots and a wait list. Um, if you realize that you've put it on the wrong date you can click into here and change the date directly in this calendar or if you want to duplicate this and say okay I have an event that's running three days of uh, something like Banff. If I have three days of that event I can click Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday and it will add this to all three days but I only need it for this Monday. So I'm going to add that shift right here And you can see it pop up right over here. Now I can add an additional greeter shift right below it to the same day um, and have it be two separate events. So let's say if we had um, a school day series in the morning and then an event in the evening, you could do two different shifts um, on that same tab. And I'll show you in here what that looks like. So if we come over here to the show sign up, you'll see right here, Monday, May 15th of 2023, there's a greeter at the test event for the historic theater, music hall, time slot, two spots, and then the sign up um, option right here. On this, you can also um, edit that shift by going into here. It will bring you back into that same dropdown so you can change any of the information anytime you need. And from here, you can also delete it. Before I show you that, if you come in here to the Assign tab, you can assign specific people. So if I want to assign myself, I'm Johnny Johnny in here, so I'm going to assign Johnny Johnny to this event. And so now, um, when I go over here to the Sign Up, it says that there's one spot because I am confirmed for it. Then back over here you can see that this is going to fill up to one of two spots full and there it is. But obviously this event isn't real, it's not happening today, so we're going to go ahead and delete it. Go to edit shift and delete. That will also send an email to volunteers to let them know that their shift has been deleted. 
And that should be everything you need to know about creating shifts um, for the back end of time counts at the music hall. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. My email is jjordan at themusichall.org. Thank you so much for watching, and we hope to see you again in the next video.